Bienvenido, ministro. Eh, esta reunión eh, está bilingüe, ¿no? Eh, tenemos interpretación simultánea. Eh, si necesitan equipo, lo tienen eh, allí en la mesa. Eh, lo pueden buscar. Lo vamos a hacer entonces en los dos idiomas, cualquier eh, con que le dé uh, ganas. <risa> Pero por favor, una a la vez, no, este, no las dos, para no confundir al intérprete. Um, so uh, we're, we're going to start uh, with uh, a few words, unas palabras del ministro, le voy a presentar, aunque yo creo que todos aquí lo conocen. Luego voy a dar unas palabras breves sobre el informe que todos tienen en la mesa y que nosotros eh, lanzamos hoy día. Y eh, luego vamos a pasarle la palabra a varios de ustedes, eh, según el tiempo nos permita. ¿no? Pero primero para agradecer al ministro estar con nosotros, eh, el, el, el doctor Luis Francisco Sucre Mejía eh, es eh, doctor eh, dos veces, doctor médico y doctor de filosofía, ¿no? doctor médico con especialidad en salud ocupacional y eh, doctorado en salud pública. Entonces, es el doctor, doctor, pero eso no se dice, ¿no? Este, eh, pero eh, ha tenido varias eh, posiciones eh, importantes en el gobierno de, eh, de Panamá eh, y también eh, antes de ser ministro, pero yo creo que eh, realmente merece eh, reconocimiento por haber eh, guiado eh, su país a través de la pandemia, que realmente es el tema del programa de hoy. Eh, el, eh, estamos en una nueva era, estamos en lo que nosotros estamos llamando eh, the COVID-19 era uh, for healthcare. O sea, nosotros hemos experimentado eh, todo lo que ha pasado en los últimos tres años, pero ha cambiado todo, ¿no? Lo, reconoce, eh, lo reconocemos y no queremos sobre todo olvidar las lecciones que hemos aprendido. Entonces, hemos invitado al ministro a empezar un diálogo entre nosotros sobre este tema. ¿Qué ha cambiado? ¿Cuáles son las lecciones que debemos aprender? Eh, ¿cuáles, ¿Cuáles son… Eh, las políticas de salud que debemos eh, buscar uh, hacia el futuro, preparando no solo para esta, eh, esta nueva era en que la COVID-19 todavía está con nosotros, no ha, no ha desaparecido desafortunadamente, pero en que también tenemos que estar preparado para una pandemia del futuro y donde también tenemos que eh, volver a tratar todo lo que se puso al lado durante la pandemia. Entonces, con esto, ministro, nuevamente, nuevamente le agradezco su presencia con nosotros y le paso la palabra. Muchas gracias. Bueno, muy buenos días a todos y a todas. Primero que todos reciban un saludo cordial y una bienvenida de parte del presidente de la República, Laurentino Cortizo. En segunda instancia, eh, Decirles que para Panamá es un honor contar con la presencia de todos ustedes aquí durante estas fechas. Panamá ha venido siendo escenario de reuniones internacionales de alto nivel en los últimos días y seguiremos siendo escenario de otras reuniones internacionales que se van a estar dando aquí en este país y precisamente la gran mayoría de esas reuniones tienen como objetivo el trabajar en equipo, ya no solamente a nivel nacional, sino, tam sino también a nivel internacional. No solamente a nivel de los diferentes estados, sino público-privada. Y es parte de lo que hemos aprendido durante la pandemia, haciendo uso precisamente de las palabras que usted daba hace un momento. Parte de los aprendizajes que nos dejó la pandemia es, uno, trabajar en equipo a lo interno de cada uno de nuestros países, público, privado. Panamá trabajó con todos los partidos políticos, con todas las empresas privadas, 
con todas las organizaciones sociales, aquí no se excluyó a nadie en el trabajo durante la pandemia. Y creo, o estamos convencidos realmente, que ha sido uno de los elementos que nos ayudó mucho a poder salir rápido de la misma y a tener en estos momentos buenos resultados. El trabajo en equipo con la inserción de todos los actores de la sociedad civil, sin menoscabar ni menospreciar a nadie, incluyendo las comunidades de fe, incluyendo las autoridades comarcales, que normalmente hay barreras que dificultan la comunicación entre todas las comunidades de fe, o hay barreras culturales que dificultan la comunicación permanente entre los diferentes gobiernos y las autoridades comarcales o indígenas. Pues la pandemia nos enseñó y nos obligó a aprender a cómo trabajar en equipo. Hoy, durante este evento, el cual tenemos inicio eh, con este desayuno, Panamá tiene la disposición no solamente de aportar lo que hayamos aprendido durante la pandemia, sino aprender y escuchar nuevos métodos y nuevos avances que podamos tener, no solamente para Panamá, sino para todos los países de la región y del mundo entero. Muchas gracias. Gracias, ministro. Eh, realmente eh, importante escuchar sus palabras aquí eh, en, en este grupo, porque creo que una de, uno de los mensajes más importantes que hemos escuchado eh, durante todas nuestras sesiones es la importancia de tener todos los interesados, los stakeholders, eh, en la conversación, sector privado, sociedad civil, uh, a todos, es muy importante, y todos los gobiernos, por supuesto, trabajando eh, de manera conjunta eh, en, en estos, eh, bueno, en lo que ha sido una crisis de salud pública, ¿no?, y que sigue siendo eh, muy importante. Eh, voy a cambiar a inglés. Eh, I'm going to switch to English to announce, just do a little uh, description of the report that you all have in front of you. Uh, which is uh, a report that comes from a series of roundtables. You'll be happy to know I'm not going to read it to you, uh, <laughs> but I am going to just give you a little brief overview of it. Thi this was, you'll see that we brought together a lot of experts across a lot of different sectors uh, to, to ask the question, what, what lessons should we learn going forward? What is, what is the uh, important things that we don't want to lose. One of the things that came out of this was that the flu pandemic of 1918, a lot of, well, a lot of people remembered it personally. They, they had relatives who had died. They had a lot that we lost a lot of the institutional lessons from that pandemic. We can't afford to do that again. So this is a small contribution focused on COVID-19 vaccines to, um, to help us remember those lessons, help us think about what are the things that we want to make sure we don't forget. And I'm just going to list very quickly the four areas that came out of these discussions. Uh, the importance of messaging and of learning. I think we all realized that there was a lot of fake news going on and, and that a lot of even frontline medical professionals didn't really understand what was going on with, the, with uh, COVID-19 and with the vaccines that were being created. This was a new uh, technology, a new group of vaccines, and a lot of people simply didn't understand it. So it really came out how important that was. Secondly, financing. We all know that health systems came out of this, um, uh, of this pandemic in worse shape because so much had to be put in to, uh, to fixing this, uh, uh, to dealing with the crisis at hand. And we realized, too, that the way that financing was done uh, uh, didn't work as well as we wanted it to be done for these vaccines. So we need to look at new systems, and we discuss in there some of the ideas that our panelists had in terms of innovative financing and the need to look at sustainable financing going forward, not just on vaccine front, but also for healthcare systems in general. Third, and the minister has already mentioned this, the importance of intergovernmental and interinstitutional collaboration, that in the countries where that worked, uh, like Argentina and Colombia really stood out to our panelists as places where they were able to, to do that, to really pull together the different institutions, uh, that, that that made a huge difference. And it's something that we don't want to let go of, we don't want to lose. 
not just within governments, but across governments, and not just across governments, but across sectors, academic, civil society, and of course, private sector, which we represent. And the last area is to the importance of maintaining and expanding treatments of COVID-19 for vulnerable populations. As we know, it has not gone away. And uh, it's not going to go away, it seems. So we need to figure out how to address it on an ongoing basis and particularly make sure that those who are most vulnerable to COVID-19 are, are taken care of and that we continue to improve the treatments, that we continue to assure that there is accessibility of those treatments. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm, uh, I just encourage you all, this is not a long report. It's really, incur it's really intended to spur thinking among all of you uh, and among those who read it. Uh, we will be putting out a Spanish version. We don't have it quite yet, but we will put be putting out a Spanish version, a Portuguese version. You're the first to see it. We're launching it today, and we'd love to get your reactions to that. So with that, um, what, I, what we're going to do is have a little opportunities for interventions en español, en inglés, como quieran. Uh, what I'd like to do is start with some of, uh, some of the people who may have more to say on the uh, COVID-19 side. And I'd like to start, as Eric reminded me yesterday, with our board members, because that's always a good place to start. So I'd like to start with uh, Andrew Martin and just give you the opportunity to, s to give us a few words on this topic of healthcare in the COVID-19 era. Andrew. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'd first like to congratulate the council uh, on delivering this fantastic report uh, full of many critical and insightful lessons learned uh, through the pandemic. It serves to remind us of the powerful relationship between the health uh, of our societies and its productivity. In 2020, GDP declined globally by more than three and a half percent. Unfortunately, in this region, the impact was threefold. It serves as a painful reminder of the importance of building resilient and dynamic healthcare systems that are capable of responding to another pandemic uh, while ensuring they can maintain access to basic preventative measures, including routine vaccination. At Pfizer, we believe in a future where science wins and disease doesn't. That will require our industry uh, to continue to invest in and believe in the power and the precision of science to confront any future threats that we face to humankind. It will require governments to, in view, to view healthcare as an investment and not as an expense. And most importantly, it will require all of us to work to ensure we adhere to the principles of equity, to ensure that we're working collaboratively to create healthcare systems that enable access to everyone, regardless of where they live or their socioeconomic condition. <coughs> Research suggests that unfortunately, we will likely face in our lifetimes another pandemic. And that's why the report and its conclusions, and frankly, the roadmap it lays out for us is so critical because we all have collectively the power to follow those lessons learned, to imply the resources and efforts necessary to ensure that we're prepared in the event of another pandemic. Thank you. Ministro, gracias por estar con nosotros. Un aplauso para el ministro, por favor. Y gracias a todos ustedes. Eh, realmente un placer tenerles aquí. I hope that you will join us uh, on May 2nd for our Washington Conference on the Americas or at one of our programs in New York or in Washington or Miami. We'd love to have you do that. And thank you again for your time this morning for joining us. So uh, we'll see you this afternoon, those in the private sector and those in the government. Go to work. Yeah. <laughs>